Alright folks, I'm just doing a video of a D3C Cat Dozer. Um, I kind of just bought this knowing there was issues with it. Uh, when I bought it, I just thought I'd just have a little winter project to keep me kind of occupied through the winter. Anyway, never never went in depth in doing a transmission before, but once I got into it, it uh, actually was easier than I thought. Um, the problem with the, the dozer when I got it, it didn't have gear one, and I've been on some chat forums and noticed that a lot of people have questions on the same issue that I have, and nobody was coming up with answers. So I thought I might do a little video just to show what I came up with or found, and uh, hopefully it may help someone out there because uh, it seems to be a problem that uh, has occurred a few times with the DC-3s. Anyway, uh, gear one would not work in forward or reverse, and I found out once I got going at, the, at this, there's five sets of clutches in the, uh, in the dozer, the transmission. Uh, one clutch will do forward gear, one clutch will do reverse gear, and then you got one clutch for each of the other three gears, so one, two, and three makes up five sets of clutches. So anyway, uh, it took quite a bit of work. This is, wasn't an open station uh, type dozer. It actually had a cab on it. So my first task was to take the cab off of the battery box and the, the back end of the dozer where all the shields are and stuff. Had to take the dash out um, in order to get room. Because this cavity right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, you'll see the flywheel and stuff of the engine. Anyway, this cavity is where the transmission was. So it was mounted up to the to the engine and a short little drive shaft which then went to the, the final drives or the rear end of the dozer. Um, so anyway, uh, disconnected all the hoses, disconnected all the electrical and stuff and pulled the uh, transmission up. The only way you can get it out is to come straight up and, and out. And if you look at the back here, uh, this is the transmission. This is kind of the bell housing of the transmission that mates up to the engine um, so it's it's standing upward now in order the reason why I did that is because I took the uh, torque converter and the, the planetary transmission uh, was pulled out and I pulled it out this way it's actually quite easy to pull it out all it is is a bolt here and another same thing on this side release those two bolts uh, use my shop crane which is off the side and just lifted everything up uh, up so far and then I had to block um, the transmission from uh, to, to kind of elevate it and then I unhooked the torque converter and then I hooked the chains back onto the transmission once the torque converter was off and pulled the uh, transmission out. Anyway, if you want to come over around here, I'll show you what I, I come up with. Uh, everybody was telling me it's clutches was the issue. Uh, the clutches were burned out on gear number one. Uh, but when I opened it up, I could not smell any burnt smell. Uh, the oil was clear. There wasn't anything obvious that uh, kind of led me to believe that it was clutches. And as I was doing all this, I realized the previous owner that I bought this from, uh, uh, I knew that gear one wasn't working, but I didn't realize he actually must have tried to do work on it himself and already had the transmission out and he went at the uh, this is the planetary of the transmission here. Um, one piece missing is a couple pieces missing is this goes on top. So that's the hub there, and this over here is actually the the what gives me my first gear. So basically, if you go down, this is the uh, the end that mates up to the engine, or actually mates up to. The torque converter which is right here this is the torque converter so the torque converter is on this end so it's basically I got it flipped upside down again the way I took it out so the torque converter then is onto this this is your forward clutches this is your reverse clutches this is your third gear clutches this is your second gear clutches and then your first gear clutches are actually this is part of it here and if you look down inside here this, this, these are the clutches for first gear right here. And then this goes on down inside. And this is basically your, uh, your, uh, oh, just lost it. Your pressure plate that 
goes up against the, the, to lock your clutches in. And this is what I discovered, why first gear wasn't working. Um, and it's all to do with this. If you notice, when this goes on, this falls down into here, that goes on, then this, this goes on here. And just to explain it a little further, there's a valve body that goes on here, and that's what puts oil into all these ports. And when you're selecting your gears and everything, here's your valve body. Um, so this is what selects your gears right here. This is first, second, and or sorry, that's four. Yeah, first, second, and thirds on this side. Forward and reverse is on this side. Um, so that's what controls the amount of oil running through here and sends it out the ports at the bottom of that, which then makes up to this and sent, directs it into these ports. And then if you notice on the planetary transmission, it's got ports going directly down through to, to send oil to these clutches, which then uh, engages the pressure plate to lock each one of these cr clutches on these different ports. And if you can you see the ports right here, and then there's a single port here that goes in and sends oil through there and it comes out here which then goes into lines up in this section here which then goes into there the oil there's a couple of holes all the way around which then sends uh, inside of this assembly here sends oil in there which then if you notice this is actually separate from this which is your pressure plate which then springs that open to jam down onto your clutches and that's what uh, engages first gear so what i came up and found because um, again first gear if you put it in forward first gear wouldn't engage and when you put it in reverse first ga or gear wouldn't engage either because these are separate clutches to what your first gear is um, anyway what i found when i pulled it apart is there's actually uh, ring seals that go into these grooves. Here's one of them, and it's a complete ring seal that goes into the lower groove, but the other one was broke, and, uh, and it was actually a piece missing. So it was a section missing. So the oil, when it was being uh, coming up through the ports and coming into here to go into these ports, was bypassing and blowing by the, uh, the top ring, so it wouldn't allow enough pressure to go in there to send the pressure plate down. So it was just a simple little thing, nothing to do with the clutches, because actually when in the previous fellow that had this, he tore this all apart and replaced all the clutches. So these clutches are brand new. Uh, didn't know that until I pulled it apart. So the clutches are brand new. So what it ended off being is this tiny little thing. and. I don't know, we're from Canada here, so I don't know where the people that are going to be looking at this video is going to be from. But this little thing from the cat dealership is $100, right, right there. So it's a $100 part, that little tiny, anyway, it's a $100 fix, basically, to, to repair this transmission. All the clutches, the pack, the set of pack clutches are about $1,600 here. So I thought that's what I was going to have to spend. It ended off the brand new clutches, so I don't have to touch the clutches. All it is is this. Now I did find something else um, when I did pull this apart that is an issue, and it's to do with this top hub. And and again, those rings are in here, and it it allows the oil to stay within this this shiny spot. Um, so there's a ring on the top and a ring on the bottom and it'll, then it sends the oil through. The oil comes up through and then into there and it, like I say, it engages it. But this is the problem I found also is there's a nasty crack in this top hub and that was allowing oil to bypass too. So it wasn't a complete seal. It has to be a complete seal. I, I read, uh, I've got the shop manual here for the dozer and I recommend anybody that's going through maintenance on a, any heavy equipment to have a shop manual because it, it it just gives you step by step, makes the job so easy. But anyway, it's got to maintain at least 55 pounds of pressure. And if that's not being maintained in here, although the pump is continuing to pumping it, uh, if it can't maintain that, then it won't engage your first gear. So that's what I found out. So I'm going to have to uh, do some repair on this. I'm trying to find a used one. 
just this alone <laughs> here in Canada for a brand new one is two thousand dollars. So I'm hoping to get a second hand one or I might see a machinist about uh, v-grooving that out and uh, welding that and then re-machining this hole. Anyway, so I'll, I'll work on that. So that's what I came up with. If you guys are trying to figure out why um, the clutch is not, or your first gear isn't working on these dozers, it could be as simple as that. This little ring here could be the simple problem as that. It, you have to do a pile of work to find that and get it pulled out and replaced. Uh, mind you, I spent a couple days taking the cab off, uh, taking the floor out and the dash apart, and, and then getting ready to pull the transmission out. Once I got the transmission out, it actually took, didn't, didn't take me any more than half an hour to pull the, trans, the, the planetaries out and the torque converter out, and then to start stripping it off uh, to find the problem. So it was very quick to find the problem once I got the transmission out. So now it's just more or less replacing these fixing or replacing this, throwing it all back together, torquing everything, following the book again, torquing everything to the specs that it needs to be, and I'll have a dozer with all up and running and operating again. But anyway, hopefully this helps someone. Uh, cheers for now.